and Brittany. Good morning, everyone. You guys can hear me okay? Okay, thank you, Linda. Good morning, Attorney Fullerton. Sweetheart, I love that hat. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Dorothy. Good morning, Dorothy. All right. Well, ladies, let us get started. And gentlemen, let us get started. I am... <clears throat> I'm getting so excited because um, having the opportunity to see you all February the 19th, February the 19th at 10 a.m., February 19th, 10 a.m., and if you have reserved seating and it's confirmed and you're not going to be able to make it, please get in touch with me so that I can be sure and switch your seats out for someone that is waiting to come. It does break my heart that I had to decrease the seating due to COVID precautions for our second annual book study brunch. We are so excited about that. Again, it'll be right at about two years that we um, had a gathering in person. We have been virtual where we used to meet physically every month. Now, we're going to stay virtual. Just for my soul ministries, it's going to stay virtual. <clears throat> but we will be having ministry events throughout the year. And this is our first event in two years. So the second annual GMS Book Study Brunch, 10 a.m., February the 19th. And so those of you who will not be participating in person, but you have been studying the book with us, and I always look for mine because it's, oh, okay, I do have it up here. <clears throat> you all that have been studying discerning the voice of God, how to recognize when God is speaking by Priscilla Schreier, we will be closing out chapter 13, 14 in person. There will be wonderful things there for you. Some dear gifts from our heart here at JMS Ministries, um, copies of the book. So you don't have to have you know, already previously have been reading the book or know what's going on, we'll have copies of the book to share with you, uh, to give you, take home, because this, this book is a must have about discerning the voice of God. You'll be able to hear from each of the panelists and see them in person. So we are, hey, it will be female and male. We've had some brothers like, I'm coming to the book study because um, I just want to be there. That's a good book. So you just come on out. If you have a soul, you welcome. <laughs> just for my soul. So JMS is a discipleship ministry. Our mission is peace and purpose for the soul through truth, love, and relationship. Truth, love, and relationship. And we get there by loving and serving everyone through biblical teaching, personal testimony, prayer, and mentoring for the glory of God. That's who we are, and that is what we do. We are a discipleship ministry. My name is Reverend Cheryl Oliver. We are growing in grace. We are growing in our relationship and our intimacy with um, Christ, and we just ask you to come along and grow with us. All right. So this morning, we're going to pick up where we left off. I was about to put my glasses on. That's a whole nother topic for another day. Um, <clears throat> chapter six, Matthew chapter six, we are at verse 16. And we're going to read this morning 
to verse 21. So get your tablets, get your pads, your pens, whatever you need to write with. You know, our um, goal this year is to hide the word in our hearts. So not if, but when you need it, it's already there. Not if, but when something hits your life, your intimacy with God is just a breath away to call his name. You're not trying to build a relationship when you get in crisis, when you get in soul trouble or soul turmoil, when you finally decide to call his name, that's not when you start building a relationship. He's always there, but in our human nature, when we don't feel that closeness, it's hard for us to reach out. So that intimacy, that building of that relationship, that oneness with them, any good relationship takes work. You can have a little casual relationship when you speak to somebody every now and then and you know who they are, you know, but not if. But when something in this life hits, you're going to need more than just a little feeling from God that you know who he is. You're going to need that powerful closeness where you've learned his ways, his voice, his character, and his love. And you can cry out to him. So, again, get your journal, get your pads, get your pens, your coffee, whatever you need because we're hiding the word in our hearts this year. And the second thing we're doing, we're taking that word and we're sending it into the generations through prayer. You're gonna hear what that sounds like at the end of the study. Our little nieces, nephews, cousins, sons, daughters, children's children's folks, we don't even know praying, we pray for their kids. They need it. And prayer is not, <clears throat> bound by times and dimension. We want these prayers for our generations to go right on from one to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, and let them hear you praying so they can learn to pray. Okay, so we're going to, second thing we're doing this year, we're sending it to the next generation, even as we pray for ourselves. And the third thing we invite you to do on Wednesdays from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., is a 12-hour time where we consecrate. We're choosing no solid food, just liquids for that 12-hour period, but dedicating that time unto God to where we are praying more, we're spending time still more, uh, we're talking to him more, we're rehearsing the scripture in our heart that we pray and study this morning, Matthew chapter 6, 16 through 21. Read it over and over and over again. Talk to him about it throughout that 12-hour consecrated time period on to him. Okay? So we just invite you to come along with us. We're choosing to do, again, no solid food, but anything liquid, whether you do your coffee, your juices, smoothie, whatever you need, um, but no solid food and instead taking that time and crying out to him, talking to him, praying for the next generation. <clears throat> Whatever's on your heart, reading the scripture we study, and not only just today, why don't you take 16 through 21 and read it and meditate on it and talk to him and the Holy Spirit about it all week until we meet again. And it'll be sure enough hidden in your heart by then. Okay, just some small things to grow the most powerful relationship you will have in your life and for your life. Amen. Let's go. <clears throat> Matthew chapter six. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Surely I say to you that they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, 
so that you do not appear to be fasting to men, but your father who is in, in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Verse 19, do not, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. All right. Let's go. Heavenly Father, open our minds, open our hearts, open our spiritual ears to hear what it is you have to say this morning. Amen. Now, <clears throat> verse 16 through 18, if you've been traveling with us, you've been rocking with us, you've been studying, you've been praying, that's a repeat. We've been in the book of Matthew for a minute now, like five months. He's repeating this uh, uh, hypocritical attitude as he's teaching <clears throat> um, the multitude, Sermon on the Mount. He had sat down and started teaching, okay? Remember from chapter five? And he's raising the standard and giving them the um, much needed corrected perspective about the word of God and activities such as fasting, prayer, um, giving, and forgiving, okay? So he's just saying now to them, what you've been seeing these religious leaders do, <clears throat> all of this, I'm fasting and they out and, you know, ripping they, what did he say here? Their countenance looking sad. They disfigure their faces. So everybody know that they fasting. He said, that's about all they gonna get with their little sorry fast that they trying to honor up to me. Their reward is gonna be right down there with the people that's staring at them going, oh my God, look at them. Okay, mess. He was saying, don't do that. If you decide, no, wrong word. <laughs> not, not if you decide. I want you to go and look back at what he says. Verse 17, but you circle this word when you fast. Okay? When you fast. It is not a, you know, if you think about it, you know, in this relationship with me, there is going to be times and moments that fasting will be necessary. Now, fasting means the complete abstinence of food, nothing, okay? Water, so you don't fall out. Fasting and consecrating is two completely different things or to just take out and limit some things from your diet for a period of time. That's not a fast, okay? Fasting is the complete abstinence. When you fast, there will be times in our lives that we will need the flesh because it'll be in all control. We'll need to break that thing down and elevate our spirit in prayer and times with God putting that flesh under subjection, eating whatever, you know, drinking whatever, just, and you said, no, it's, it's, a, it's a fleshly, it's the dying of the flesh for a period of time, all the way down to food <clears throat> and other things you decide to knock out, but it's the complete abstinence he says, when you fast. He says, anoint your head, wash your face. You don't have to appear to nobody that you fast. And that's between me and you, okay? That's between you and I. And this anoint your head, anointing um, is sacramental or it could mean medicinal. This is medicinal anointing. Clean yourselves up, put on your, your, your daily, whatever you need, anoint your head. In those days, oils was used for a lot of different reasons. 
um, sacramental, holy reasons, and then also for medicinal reasons, you know, clean yourself up, put your oil on for the day and get on. So that's what this one is, is meaning. Get up, do your daily routine, put your oil on, wash your face. Don't appear to anybody that you're fasting. That's between me and you. And what you do in secret with me, I'll reward you openly. Those things you bring into me in those times of fasting, those, those bondages that are being broken, those things that you're crying out for me to heal inside of you, whatever you're bringing on that fast, that thing you need for me to break that's been tethered to your life, oh, it'll be seen openly, but I'm gonna need you to bring it to me in secret. So he was just teaching them, don't do that hypocritical stuff that the religious leaders have been doing when it comes to fasting and prayer and giving and forgiving and making public announcements, you've gotten your reward in that fashion. You want me to do something for you, that's just between you and I. Okay, so we move on to verses 19 through 21. Now you've heard me say from time to time that, um, and it was actually something God said to me a long time ago, like back in, 2009 or 10, I would written it down and I found my notes and I was excited about that. Um, and he said, you are eternal. And of course, when he just drops something in your heart like that, you start to research it and study it and figure out what's going on. He says, you are eternal. And as that continued to evolve itself in my thinking and the, the, the more I studied and grew in him. There is a difference in how you approach life with an eternal mindset versus a temporary mindset. Okay. You see things completely different because he has eternalized us in the process of salvation, in the process of our creation. We are eternal. You will spend forever somewhere, up or down, okay? We are eternal, all right? So when we look at verses 19 through 21, and it says, do not live for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moths nor rust destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. Verse 21, highlighted. This is what I want you to commit to memory, and this one we're going to pray for the next generation. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Facts, right there. Facts. Now, this heart, its root word, cardia, um, where we get our English word from cardiac, it, it's, um, its definition is the seat of all life. Physically, okay, without your heart, this whole body don't run. And spiritually, it is the seat of emotions, morality, thoughts, thinking, okay? Physically and spiritually, it is the seat of life, the heart, okay? It is the, it is the thing that captures your desire and all your thought toward that direction, your morality toward that direction, what is the most important to you? We know it's the most important physically, literally, but also spiritually. And so it's used here for where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Where you spend your mind time, that thing that consumes you. Okay? So, you know, you know, I can't do two things at one time. So I got to like stop and look down and read. Good morning. Good morning, Mama T. Good morning, Miss Cynthia. 
Yes, Linda. Good morning, Miss Gladys. Good morning, Mr. Keith Oliver. Good morning, Mrs. Stewart. Good morning, Dorothy. Okay. So verse 19 through 21, highlight 21, put a circle around it. It is the seed of life, physically and spiritually. And so he's saying here, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. But he's saying, he's teaching on the mount to the, to the individuals that's hearing this teaching. And it's just like, this is not how the religious leaders made that sound. Jesus was like, yes, because now I'm here. Eternity has showed up. Let me tell you what I really meant when I said it long ago. Okay. I prayed in chapters five and six of Matthew. You'll never see them the same. So he says to the people, don't live for yourselves treasures on earth. He says, but live for yourselves treasures in heaven. Because going back to my first statement, all this stuff down here, temporary, y'all. I have and I am eternalizing you. Eternalizing you. All of the things that I've been teaching has eternal glory on it. It has credit in heaven. All of these things, y'all, we've been talking in chapter five and chapter six, it has eternal weight. These are the things of how the kingdom of God functions. This is the power of your life now and forever. Write that down. These spiritual things we've been learning, the perspective change, the clarity of what the word means from a kingdom view. Okay? These things, are given to us now, and they got eternal weight on them. God says in this temporary thing called life, because we are going to die. Be ready. I need you to live in such a fashion, it has eternal weight on them. in your giving in your fasting, in your prayer, in your perspective, in your speech. Put some eternal weight on it. And, but this temporary mindset and these things we give our heart to that the, on the earth that moths and rust and thieves will break and steal. Things will dissolve. They temporary. There has been more suicide numbers are up, but this week in particular has been very tragic and sad. And it has been for a while whenever you hear it. But I think the other day, um, maybe it was last night, it wasn't the other day, it was like the third suicide, me and my husband was talking about it, of these individuals, late 20s, early 30s. For whatever their reason, mental illness is real, whole lot of, whole lot of, whole lot of stuff is real. For whatever their reasons, because we don't know, they're not here to tell us. But this is what we do know. Whatever it was, it was a temporary perspective. Whatever it was, it was a temporary perspective. Whether it's what I have achieved, am I enough, how people view me, um, not sharing it with anybody to get the help, not even outliving it. Those of you with two strands of gray hair know you can outlive hell sometime. My husband made this comment. He says, I don't even remember half of the stuff I did in my 20s because you just outlive it. God heals it. 
you forget it. You get wiser, you get stronger. But when that temporary mindset has you bound, where you can't even see tomorrow, we got to pray harder, we got to do better. A temporary mindset can take you out. When you can't see nothing but right, what's right before your eyes, you can't feel nothing but the pain at the moment. What people think controls your very daily actions, what you hope to have and achieve, whatever. Temporary, y'all. Temporary. It has your heart. I've had the horrible experience of dealing with suicide up close and personal behind relationships. Really? Another human being? We got to think about what we're thinking about, y'all. We got to think about what's wrapped around our hearts. Get some help. Shine some light on it. Get a different perspective about it. All of us got to do self-inventory about where your treasures are. Okay? Because all of this stuff, houses, cause, relationships, what people think, jobs, whatever is down here on this earth. It's temporary. It's just a moment. Outlive it. Outpray it. Outcounsel it. But most of all, start to shift the things in your heart from such temporary perspectives to something more eternal. To something more eternal. I have a concept I've been sharing with many of you who I see personally, and I may have even said it on here. Everything created has a purpose. Every creator creates its creation for a purpose. Light that was created to help us see, to brighten rooms, chairs, I'm sitting in. It, it has a purpose. Whoever created a chair, this needs to help you rest your legs. Whoever created coffee cups, cups, they hold stuff so you can drink it, okay? The creator of mankind, he has an eternal purpose. He needs you to fulfill. He wants to fill you with it over time. He wants to talk to you about it in intimate dwellings with him. He wants to construct your life and your pathway so you can walk in it. That's one way we can start by not storing up for ourselves earthly treasures. Let's get with the creator and say, here's my life. Maker, now make something up. I'm just going to come to you daily and talk to you. I'm going to come to you daily with everything I'm going through, but I'm going to trust you're going to guide this thing exactly what you created it for. We don't see whales jumping up out the sea all about, I'm going to be a tiger today. They know exactly what they was created to do. Okay? Trees not saying, you know what? I'm tired of this today. I think I'm going to be saying, no, you was created to be a tree. Okay? So in this intimate relationship, we're building this closeness. You're just telling, you know, God, I had some goals and visions and all this kind of stuff. I just want to lift all of that up to you. And any part of it that doesn't line up with your will, I'm giving you permission to trash. And I, here I am 
so that you can fill me up with your created purpose for my life. Come get these thoughts, these emotions and affections, and just fill them up with you as I get closer to you, devote myself to you. You are a wonderful and masterful creator. Here's your creative being. Now, God, have your way in all my relationships and all my desires I give to you. Those that are trash, make them like yours. And he will do it. That's a promise. Surrender and see won't again. He'll take the taste out of your mouth for things that are not of his, and he'll replace it with a hunger and a thirst for him. You just got to surrender and ask him to do it and be willing to let your earthly treasures go and say, God, eternalize me because you are a masterful creator. And here's your creation coming right back to you. We have to think about the things zapping our time and energy, okay? See, now I'm, I'm just a few days over 50, all right? At this point in life, you don't have that 20, 30, and 40-year-old energy. Decisions got to be strategic, and they have to be wise. So the energy he gives us in this second half of life will be for the purposes he's planned for us and we'll be able to fulfill them. We ain't got no extra energy to expend, okay? On frivolous stuff, other people's issues. Now you gotta operate off of wisdom and not extra energy, okay? So just... Come on in here with me. Here I am, God, surrendering, eternalize me. I desire to lay up for myself treasures in heaven. All right, y'all. Let us pray. Now, highlight your verse. Verse 21. I'm going to ask you about it next week. All right? And I'm going to say, what was our verse that we hid in our heart? Verse 21. For where your heart is, your treasures will be also. You won't have to type all of that in the text, but you can at least put Matthew 6, verse 21. Hide it in your heart. Now, we're going to pray, not only for ourselves and what we've received today and, and the change that we offer up to God within ourselves, we're going to pray it for the next generation's Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, our heavenly Father. The creator of the sun, the moon, the stars, and my creator. Thank you. And Father, we start this prayer out asking for forgiveness. Because somewhere along the way, we thought this life belonged to us. For us to do with it what we chose. Forgive us. Today, not only do we acknowledge you as father, we acknowledge you as creator. And you create with purpose all things. All things you make. Here's your creation. Coming back to you. Asking for forgiveness, humbled, and saying, come into this life and have your way. Set my feet on the path that you've laid out for us. Set us on that path. We're asking you to come into our thinking and give us your perspective, God. Use our hands for your glory. Take our desires and purify and give them purpose for your will. Come into this thing called our heart, the seed of life, 
and do a divine transfer. May be full of pain. It may be full of confusion. It may be full of hurt. It may have a lack of direction. It may not even know. Hey, come in and have your way. Father, our prayer this morning is that we start to lay for ourselves up treasures in it. We long for it. We think about it. Our desire is to please you. And most of all, be your ambassador so that the people in the world can see you right on the inside of us. And they will wonder about the smile on our face, the peace in our countenance, the power in our words, and the love they feel in our hands. Use us for your glory, God. And Father, we pray for the generations ahead that their treasure, their hearts would be bound to you. So many things to take and twist their minds, God. May their minds be stayed on. May their hearts learn to love you and be devoted to you above all things. Eternalize our babies. Whether temporary emotions, temporary experiences, temporary events won't take them out. We come against from the pit of hell, premature death, depression, all of the things that take their minds, the influence of social media and and how many likes I got, all of this stuff that drives their hearts, go in and do a transplant, God. Divine heart, open heart surgery on our baby. Get their perspectives right. And may we seed them. May we, this generation, help them in our conversations, in our livings, by our own treasure. Let them see what it is in us to love God, follow God, not be consumed with temporary things, but speak to them eternal. If it's just saying, baby, keep living. Wisdom is coming your way. Baby, this is just for a moment. Let us, God, put some eternal verbiage in their minds, thought process in their minds. Help them stick to this thing call life because they saw us do it and not check out. Take the power, God, out of the earthly things that our babies will know there is more than what they can see for them. Give them the power to walk out of the things that have them bound and give them the courage to seek your face. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So, God bless you today. And Many of you need to jump off and get ready for work. You go right ahead. I understand. But those of you that may be listening and you want to know this Jesus, you want this new relationship, you know that you are eternal and you know that there is a tomorrow and you're looking for some hope, you're looking for some strength. Because the strength you got is failing. Okay. And you're ready to invite God in your life. You may not be saved and don't understand what that means, but you know what's coming out of my mouth. Sounds real good to your soul. Okay, I'm going to give you some contact information where you can call me and we can talk about it or email me and we can talk about it. 
But if you're ready to invite God in your heart, you believe the things you've heard about Jesus Christ. You just repeat after me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I need you. I'm off. I'm a sinner. I don't do things right. I'm my own God. I do what I want to do, say what I want to say, or just hopeless or confused or whatever you're feeling right now, just tell it. And Father, I believe in you. I believe your love. I believe your Savior, Jesus Christ, your Son, paid a price for me. What is life? I've heard the story. And I want you to come into my life. I want your spirit to live in my heart. So, Father, I'm asking you to forgive my sin, forgive my rebellion, forgive my just innocent ignorance, and save me. I welcome you into every aspect of my life, my thinking, my everything. In the name of Jesus, amen. And as simple as that, it's as simple as that. Now you have to grow in your faith, in your belief, and in his word. He is his word. So to know God, maybe is to know his word. And if you prayed that simple prayer with me, walking in your new found salvation, get in touch with me so that I can guide you. Many, many, I have many brothers and sisters in Christ, Bible-based church homes where you can get baptized, become a part of that family if you choose to. But now you're at the stage of growing in your salvation. Okay? So that's a done deal. That's a done deal. Um, I wanted to say this to y'all in my lesson, but I forgot. And that happens from time to time. Also, jot down in your notes, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 40. And it reads, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest command, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hangs all the law and the prophets. So we see that it is even a commandment for us to love God with all our heart, which goes back to our verse that we're memorizing, verse 21 in chapter 6. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. And the creator has already spoken to be created what to do with your heart. He says, love. Make me your treasure. Amen. Amen. You all have a beautiful, beautiful day. And let me put my stuff on up here. For those of you who did want to get in touch with me about salvation, let me give you um, our information. Those of you that got to go to work, I completely understand. Good morning to Neil. Good morning, Linda. Y'all been commenting. I was gone for a minute. Good morning, good morning, good morning. That's right, Brittany. Brittany said this verse 621. You better memorize it for next week. Love you, love you, love you. These are the opportunities that you see on your screen that you have to grow in your relationship with Christ right along with Just For My Soul Ministries. 
we have prayer moments, which you are a part of right now. And then later tonight, we have a 9 p.m. conference call. Um, some of the same lesson is repeated, and sometimes it's a little bit more. That whole 9 p.m. is a whole family, y'all. They, they, just, they just special. Come on and join it. We have teaching, seconds on the, teaching sessions on the second Saturday of the month, and that will be February the 12th. February the 12th. Our soul healing sessions on the fourth Thursday, 7 p.m. And oh, y'all, you have to go to the um, YouTube channel or the website and see the last soul healing session. That thing took on a life of its own. It is on the fourth Thursdays. That'll be February the 24th, February the 24th at 7 p.m. Testimony interviews will be as posted. I have some awesome ones lined up for you. I just need to sit down and actually do them. And our fall book study for 2022, it will be coming. You just, you just stay um, alert for that announcement. It usually comes for the end of the summertime. And um, for those of you um, who would like to contact JMS and talk about salvation, um, here's the information I promised you. Our email, our phone number, that phone number rings right to my phone or you can text right to my phone. Um, you can email us. Here's our website where you can go and see all of our teachings, our YouTube channel. You just type in just for my soul, Cheryl. Uh, and please go ahead and um, like that YouTube channel or, or whatever you do, join it. I know I have my social, social struggles with all of this stuff. Whatever you do, subscribe. That's the word I'm looking for to the YouTube channel. We're on your social media streams of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, where you can see our um, announcements and your donations. We are so excited. We are um, beginning a year long um, endeavor with Clear Lake AME Church, where we are joining them in feeding um, the homeless on a monthly basis. So our goal, our job in this project is to make snack bags so thank you for your donations. I went to Sam's and bought a whole bunch of stuff. And um, I'm going to get these folks that live with me to put these big old snack bags together where the homeless people could, you know, keep them and use those snacks um, for, you know, when they get hungry. And I'm going to make them big enough where they can have it for several days. That's the types of things that your donations do. Um, it allows us to put together and meet the needs of people. We also partner with the Houston Food Bank. We do several things with your donations. We put um, tools in the hands of individuals to grow in their relationship with Christ, um, like books and, and lessons and whatever else they need because they have shown a desire to grow and we want to encourage their journey. Um, oh my God, through the pandemic, your donations were a lifesaver. We joined with all types of, you know, hurricane events and feeding events. So thank you. Thank you for your donations. And of course, um, as I mentioned, when we opened, we are building for our second annual fall book study front. You see the book titled there, Discerning the Voice of God by Priscilla Schreier, February the 19th, 10 a.m. There's the address. Please, please RSVP with confirmation. We are currently full. But in case anybody within the next three weeks cancel, because life happens, I can put you in their spot. So please, please, please um, go ahead and, and text that number, 832-342-7587. And I'll text you right back to let you know if um, you were able to fit into one of those spots. And again, we cut the room size in half due to COVID precautions. We're going to have a boxed meal. Um, no hands will be touching editable items. We will have the book there in case those of you who haven't purchased it and want the book. We're going to have all types of gifts from JMS to you. Um, I'm so excited about these little gifts. But most of all, we're going to have an exciting and explosive book study. We'll be closing out chapter 13 and 14. 
and you will be able to meet the panel guest. And um, they're going to actually summarize the book for you. And then we're going to go into 13 and 14. So we're looking forward to it. And if you're going to be with us online, it'll look like the standard book study. You'll be able to follow the PowerPoint um, along with us. And um, we're going to start at 10 on the 19th, not 9.30. We're going to start at 10. So if you're viewing via Facebook and you jump on at 9.30, like, where are them people at? Just know um, we're going to start a little bit later on that day. All right. That's all I have for you. You have a wonderful and magnificent day. I love you. Bye-bye to you now. Bye-bye, Ms. Linda, Ms. Neil. I see you there, Ms. Stewart, Kiana, Ms. Lisa, Attorney Fullerton, Jennifer, Brittany, Mama D, Dorothy, Carolina, your beautiful self. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all have a blessed day. Ms. Cynthia, thank you for joining us this morning. Love y'all. Take care. Call in tonight if you have a moment at night. Bye for now.